So as we're laying here on our backs, give your body a few good breaths, just to let yourself pump the lungs. Deep inhales. Oh, wonderful, relaxed exhales. And take a few rounds like that. And just while we're getting started here, to help us continue to get into that deep expansion of the lungs, I'd like us to take a box breath. So this means we inhale for four counts, and then we pause for four counts with that inhale retained. Exhale for four counts, and then pause without air at the very bottom. And so we're going to go through three rounds of this. Let's try to go with slow counts. So inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, last one, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, good. So just having felt our lungs expand and then hold, feeling that strength, and then gradually exhale, we start to feel this powerhouse that's within us this power to not only control our muscles, but to control our breath. And our focus today is on the powerhouse. So this is a word that, that was really started to use with yoga ladies. And so um, essentially the powerhouse is all the abdominal muscles, all the side waist muscles, and even all the back muscles, including the glutes. That, that are required for us to do some of the really strong Pilates movements that we do in class. And so our intention, not only focusing on the breath like we just did as a powerhouse, but our, our focus will be on trying to isolate different muscle groups that are all around the entire powerhouse region, this entire core. It helps us to build awareness that the core is not just the abs, but it's everything that's required to do these movements. And so as we're getting started here, take the knees into the chest, do a couple of nice little rocking movements for that low back. Just a kind, uh, kind way to start off. Very gentle, helping our low back realize, okay, she's just here to support me. And then from here, we'll turn our knees into a nice 90 degree angle. So that means legs lift up parallel to the floor and also the thighs need to go right over the hips. So it's just enough that you start to feel some of those low abdominal muscles start to get engaged right here. And our first thing that we're isolating in our class today is actually the higher abdominal area. So closer up to the rib cage. What we're going to do to isolate that is do crunches where we lift up the back and the shoulders and we pause for a moment right at the top and then we relax back down. Take a nice inhale, exhale, lift shoulders, crunch up, pause, and relax back down, inhale. Notice how this particular movement could work with that same box breath where you exhale and hold, inhale, and hold. So if that feels natural, take that. That helps us make ensure this pause at the top. But if you just prefer the normal exhales and inhales, it's too much work to think about the box breath. You don't have to have that.
Let's take five. And four. Three. Two. And one. Beautiful. Let the knees relax. Let's take a nice twist. Knees heading over to the left side. Switch the direction over to the right side. Center. Now we're going to work the lower abdominal area. Head, neck, and shoulders gets to stay on the ground nice and heavy. Arms are on the floor or thumbs touch slightly under the hips to make sure low back is flat on the ground. The legs resume that same 90 degree angle shape that they took a moment ago. And then what we do here without letting low back lift off the ground at all, we start to lower the toes down. You don't have to touch the ground, but you are maintaining the same 90 degree angle shape. And then inhale, bring it right back. So lowering toes down and up. If it feels like you're not getting super hard into the core, lift your toes slightly above 90 degree angles. And then when you touch the toes down, you have to lower quite a bit deeper. Remember, low back is not allowed to lift. That's part of what makes this a low abdominal exercise. Perhaps add in the box breath with the pause, maybe hovering right above the ground. And return the pause. not so much about speed as it is about having that quality holding time. So if you're doing the breath with me, let's go for five more rounds and hold. Inhale and hold. Four. Three, two, and one. Good. With the legs released long on the ground, you'll feel that immediate release in the hip flexors. And from here, the right foot stays on the ground, but the knee goes super wide. So foot's resting, knees kind of hovering here. And then right hand simply rests on that knee for a moment. Just feel that nice hip opener going on. Like a half squat, essentially. And then slide that leg back to the ground and left knee does the same thing. The knees cover and the foot still in contact with the ground. And then hand just to help weigh the knee down. Okay. Leg gets to go nice and long to the ground for a moment. 
arms are going to stretch up overhead. And from here, we're going to start setting up our next thing. Again, you have the option for box breath, but if that's too hard, just do exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Either way, our lungs are getting that chance to pump out. So with this one, it's one step up from where we were. It's including both the upper and the lower rectus abdominis at the same time. So what we do is allow ourselves to crunch the elbows in toward the knees, pause at the top, so that's what includes the upper abdominis, and then extend out, find an angle where your legs are still comfortable. Our hands are not supporting us this time, so it probably will be a bit higher up, but low back is on the ground and we're hovering out. That's what gets us into the lower abdominal. So crunch up, make sure to lift up shoulders, and extend legs out. I like to do the exhale when I'm coming in. Maybe a pause. Inhale, extend out. Maybe a pause. Nice and slow like this. Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. Let the legs drop back onto the ground. So that stretch up overhead, that's what helps the rectus abdominis to get to stretch out after the work it just did. The rectus abdominis is essentially the six pack abs. They're the ones that are up and down. And there's those little dividers to help have those different segments that we can isolate. Just take another wonderful breath in and out. So now from here, allow the arms to start spreading open to left and right on the ground. Our knees are going back into that nice 90 degree angle shape. Toes can be slightly higher if you wish. They're just not dropping lower. So, so nice and even or higher. So from here, we're starting to isolate the, the oblique muscles. These are what helps us to twist. And so same box breath as long as that's comfortable. We tilt part way to one side and pause. Coming back up and pause. I like to do exhale, pause, inhale, pause. And really feel like your lungs are like a bellow for that brief inhale and exhale. We're really trying to flush the lungs out. Huge amount of inhale, huge amount of exhale. Let's take three more. And two. And one. Good, from here, bottoms of feet are touching together. They're on the ground and knees open up like a cobbler pose. Take a couple of breaths. I'll start explaining where we're going to head 
to help the obliques continue to, to build up their strength even deeper. Now, if what we just did is about what the low back and the obliques can handle today, don't feel any pressure to do anything more than that. If you're adding on, what we're going to do is start adding, increasing the difficulty every two reps. So one rep includes going both left and right. And so with two reps, we're going to have the first two look exactly like what we just did. Knees are bent the whole time and up, bent the whole time and up, and then another repeat to each side. After that, every two reps, we, incre we increase the difficulty by letting the legs extend out and come in, adding one each, each two cycles. So in other words, after we've done the first two, we tilt over to one side, the legs extend and bend just once. Over to the other side, extend and bend back to the center. Another set just like that. That's the, set, the third and the fourth reps. After that, we add it on. So the next set of reps would have two legs extensions, and then two leg extensions. Two complete reps of that, and then three, four, five, etc. We'll keep on going until we really fill it in the abs. Okay, so I'm starting back open, bring the knees back together, hovering. The first two are exactly what we just did. So tilt part way to one side, and back. Second set, and back. Okay, now if you want more difficulty, tilt, one leg extension, and bend, and back. Tilt, one leg extension, in, and back. Another set of that with one. And one. Good, if you want more, go for two. You'll have to start pumping the breath each time you do a leg extension. That'll be what feeds us the oxygen. Two kicks. And another set with two. And two. Good, if you're adding on difficulty, we're going for three. Three. Three again to each side. And three. You're still doing okay. We're going for four now. Four, three, two, one. And four, three, two, one. And another set of four. Three, two, one. And four, three, two, one. Okay, maybe we're going up to five. This is our last increase. Five, four, three, two, one. And five, four, three, two, one. Another set to each side. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, if you want to increase, you're going to, at this point, just straighten the legs back up. They're going to stay straight. If you're really shaky, this last set, I just want you to keep the knees bent. When we tilt over to the side, we just Pause. Straight legs or bent knees. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Return back up. 
tilt to second side and pause. The further down you go, the harder your core is working. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One more each side. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And last one, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Hips back to the center, shoot the left leg long. The right knee is bent. Send that bent knee into the twist to the left. Feel those oblique muscles being pulled long through the twist. His legs are so happy to get that break. <laughs> okay, right hip returns. Right leg gets the slide long. Left knee comes in and start to send it immediately to the twist. Okay, once we're back, plant the feet, hands are by the floor, right by the hips, and we're rising up to a bridge pose. So from here in the bridge pose to help us engage the glute and the low back area, we're going to do small little pulses up and down, not too fast, up and down, up and down. Just keep on going, exhale, inhale. Five, four, three, two, one, and hold with stillness. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release, roll all the way back down. And do some nice windshield wipers. Knees left and knees right. Okay. Now there is another set of abdominal muscles that we don't always work on. And so because of that, you know, we do have to use them as we look throughout our day, but we don't always have strength through them like we do as people are constantly doing crunches to work on the rectus abdominis. So this is called the transverse abdominis. It wraps around our waist like a cummerbund going this direction. And what this is helpful for is when we're leaning laterally to a side. So it's like if you if you have something on the table and you kind of move your reach and pick it up and then grab it, that's it's those muscles that we're using to do that. And so to help us get into the transverse abdominis, helping us to strengthen that area here, what we're going to do is essentially be on the back, wiggling like a little beetle, trying to trying to you know come onto its back again. So our knees start up, our elbows start up nice and prepared. What we do is crunch the right side together. And so the right elbow touches to the right thigh or if you can slide the elbow past the thigh a little bit, take that. As the left arm and leg stretch, you'll feel the, the transverse abdominis really pull long for the stretch part. 
and then switch crunch to the, the left side as right side goes down. And crunch and crunch. So it's essentially just a side body crunch. Maybe stillness goes up, maybe gentle movements. Either gazing the head left and right or lifting the head up and down little pulses. Give the neck a chance to just relax on the ground. Maybe letting the right ear come closer to the right shoulder. And the left ear to the left shoulder. Okay, as head relaxes back onto the ground. Here we're going to go back into the rectus abdominis, those nice straight long muscles. And we're going to do V sits. So if this is extremely hard for you, you, you feel like you can't do the whole thing, you're going to do what we did earlier, where you crunch up and then extend out. That's a perfect variation to make it a little bit easier. If you can do the full thing, what you're going to do is alternate between stretching arms and legs high up on the ground, away from one another. And then with a huge exhale, sit up like a figure B, going straight into boat pose, pulling all the way back down. Okay, so your preference, which often works for your body, you do have a, you know an intermediate variation where you kind of grab onto the thighs to try to sit up, balancing, and then back kind of like a half boat. So you got variations you can play with. Just choose what your body can handle today. We're gonna try to go for ten. So we need a huge inhale on the ground. Exhale, rise up. And down. Here's nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, and two, and one. Beautiful. Rest the hands back down onto the ground. From here, working the lower part of the abdominal muscles just slightly deeper, we're going to not only touch the toes down and bring it in, but when it comes in, we're going to try to do almost like a reverse crunch, where the hips try to lift off the ground. It might just be a little bump, or it could be a whole curl in, like this. So you're choosing the variation that works for your body. Find your 90 degree angle, and then toes travel down, and all the way up with the hips. Try to make it rolling so the muscles are keeping that control the whole time. And eight. And seven. Here's six. Five. Four. Three, two, and one. Good. 
gonna roll up, maybe taking rolling like a ball a few times. Nice little massages from the back. Eventually heading for a break for cobbler's pose. If you ever need a sip of water, this could be a good moment. And feel the back and the legs taking this break while they have it. Spine rises back up, pick up the knees. We're preparing for boat pose with a nice little Russian twist. We have both hands together. One hand has a fist, the other hand hugs around the fist. The fist touches to a hip and then it reaches high up to the sky to touch to the other hip. Each hip touches an exhale, each lift is the inhale. So find yourself balancing in boat pose. If that gets to be too much, just set the feet down and keep on doing that same motion. So, starting to find balance, make the, the hands ready, inhale up high, exhale touch to one hip. Let's get those into the obliques again. Feel free to let your knees twist to the opposite direction of your hands. So from here, there's nothing better for the core really than including some nice planks. Plank includes the whole thing holding strong and firm all at the same time. So we're going to create a little series for ourselves that we are going to increase the reps for. So each, each variation in this, we're going to hold for the count of 10 and then go down. So essentially the first, I'll, I'll just talk you through it first before we get into it. The first part is a nice side plank on the elbow. What we're trying to do is have our feet separated um, such that it's easy to then drop the elbow down into a plank position. So it's that same positioning of the feet. So if I'm here on my right side, my left leg is, is toward that right side of the mat. Okay? so. The first count of 10 will be holding in side plank to this direction. The second count of 10 will be holding with both elbows down. And then the third set of 10 will be going twisting over to the other side for that elbow side plank. And then back down to the center for a last set of 10. That will be one rep. Okay, so we're gonna just do one rep here, trying it out for ourselves. Get one of your elbows down. Your feet are prepared. And we lift up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, both elbows down. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Second side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Back to both elbows. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Drop the knees. Just a moment with child pose. So that was one rep. What we're going to do next is try to do two reps of that. So take a break for a moment. If you need to kind of straighten your elbows out, shake anything out. If you need a blanket to go grab and pat it, that's fine. We need a couple more breaths just for the next thing, child pose. Okay, when you're ready, we're gonna try to go for two back to back. Obviously, if you need to drop down to knees to make it easier, that's okay. Get your feet ready. Choose your first twisted side and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Both elbows. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one second side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Back down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That was rep one. Here's two. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Both elbows down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, second side, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest for a moment, take a break, maybe the head can rest down, We're gonna have one more increase after this. So building up three reps back to back to back. If you like to stay on the elbows, take that. If you need to drop to knees at all, take that. If you want to walk with me up onto hands for this one, you can also take that variation. So personal preference. Maybe rise up to sit for just a moment. Let your torso spin out left and right. Just kind of loosening up all sorts of abdominal muscles. Okay, hands ready, elbows ready, wherever we're going. And let's head to our first twist. Going for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Second side, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Finishing first rep. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Second rep. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Second side. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Last rep. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Last time. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one. Good job, let's take a sphinx pose. Lower down, all the way to elbows. The hands are on the floor, allowing them to pull back. Allows the belly to get drawn forward and through. Maybe the head gets a nice little break, dropping one ear over one shoulder. Rolling through the center. Other ear over other shoulder. And perhaps free form this nice and loose. Maybe find the tight spots to pause. arms up long in front of us. We're going to rise up into Superman so the arms and the legs will float. We're going to try to, to do the hold just like we did for the plates. We're going to hold for the count of 10. Now it's harder for me to count down when I'm on my belly. So we're all going to count about the same pace that we've been doing. Counting for that 10 and then I'll tell us when to drop. After we do 10 forward, we're going to go 10 with airplane arms to the sides, and then 10 with arms at our sides. That should be the highest one. And then back around, all the way step by step, back to forward. So, when you're ready for the first one, take a huge inhale to lift. Count down in your head. Drop down. Take a breath. Arms come to the side, the airplane position. You should be a little bit higher than before. And when you're ready, rise up. Counting for 10. Drop down. Reset the arms to be by your sides. Take a breath. Next inhale, lift. Lower. Arms to airplane. Take a breath. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Arms forward. Rest. Take a breath. Find another lift here. Lower. One more rep to each side. Airplane arms. Take another break. Take a breath. Inhale, lift. Rest. Arms by the sides. This should be super high for this next position, so try to focus on extra inches lifting. Another inhale, exhale, inhale, begin. Lower, arms to airplane. Try to lift to be the highest airplane you've had so far. Super high with your next inhale. Lower, arm her up by the ears. Take a break. This will be our last one, so try to make this position the highest one that you've done so far. Take a nice inhale. Exhale. Inhale, last one. Float high. Good. Shoot back into a nice child pose. So the whole back stretch. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. Now we're going to take the last couple of minutes just to help our body stretch out prior to Shavasana. So a moment with downward facing dog, curl the spine, all those muscles of the back and the glutes, even the legs, really stretch them out. Long. Right leg starts to float up to the sky. Step that right foot in between hands. Back knee can drop down. As we sink our hips forward, perhaps we're walking up to the thigh or even arching the heart slightly backwards. Good, leg straight, drop the hands down, half splits. Okay, this knee comes back, rise up to downward facing dog. And left foot steps forward. Drop the right knee down. Sink the hips already to a very long line forward. Maybe hands are up on thigh. Maybe we're lifting the spine to lean slightly back even. That should increase the stretch through the right hip. And a nice half splits. Dropping down. Step back and then allow yourself to take another downward facing dog. From here, walk hands backwards and foot forward, hold to give the back side of the legs a really good chance to stretch out as well. Maybe the spine gets to go to a long angle, a long low angle. And bend the knees to roll up. Step super wide on the mat. Traveling back forward, there's a new stretch that we feel in the legs. Planting the hands on the ground. We're going to let the toes turn outward to 45 degree angles and then walk the hands over toward the right foot and into a little squat over that foot. This lets the left leg have such a long inner thigh stretch. Sometimes it's fun to play with a little balance, hands coming up to heart for a moment. And when you drop down, switch legs. Maybe hands up to heart. Beautiful. Straighten both legs. Take that nice forward fold for another moment. And then as toes turn out, we roll upright. Hands come to inner thighs. And we squat down like goddess pose, chest is straight but leaning forward so that this pushes the inner thighs into a really good stretch. You can have stillness or sometimes rocking left and right can feel nice. And then going toward yoga squat, heel toe the feet a little bit closer, more like slightly wider than hips and then come all the way down into the yoga squat. Good, from here, one hand goes in front of you, one hand goes behind you to help the lower hips down. Let's use our core to slowly lower all the way down to the ground. 
And then ask your body what last stretches it wants. Does it want another twist? Does it want a happy baby pose? Maybe it even wants a plow pose. Letting yourself roll all the way back to that long stretch with the back plane pose. So just keep on exploring, there's no rush. Maybe after another 10 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe another minute or so, our body says, okay, I'm happy, I'm complete. Let's find our Shavasana. You don't have to be in the normal variation. If you prefer to have the feet in cobbler, perhaps, feet planted, falling into one another, all of these are great options. Personal preference really is what dictates this. But start to let your breath really flow. Maybe taking a few rounds of the box breath to bring us right back to where we started, connecting to this powerhouse of the lungs and the whole core. Begin here to deepen the inhales and exhales. Starting to introduce movements to the body. Eventually stretching out long. Like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually a nice fetal position off to one side. Maybe two or three more breaths. And 
And when we rise up to sit, our hands join together in front of our hearts. We feel a deep connection to something bigger than us, to this powerhouse that's got us in a strong foundation. It's like we don't have to be in control of everything. We don't have to like put it all upon ourselves that, that if I don't, you know, if I don't show up, then nothing will get done. We can step aside realizing we've got support, whether that's metaphorically our family, our co-workers. We can lean on, on people occasionally. And that's what our powerhouse is for us. It's our support so that our spine feels good and strong as we're sitting and moving throughout the day. So our body thanks us for taking this time to become stronger. And so with that support system to help lead us onward, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of OM. We've been how now? Mm -hmm. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.